Next question <clears throat> is from Eric Summer Hayes. I see a lot of professional athletes, mostly baseball players, that are overweight. Would those players be able to increase their athletic abilities by dropping some body fat, or is there actually an advantage to packing on extra weight? This is a cool question. This, yeah, Justin must have picked this question. I, up. Yeah, it's yeah. A, you know, near and dear to my heart. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, <laughs> no there, I, I, I like my the, fatty athletes out there. I like this because I've, there's there's um, I've heard both sides argued really well, and I and I can see where you know let's take someone like a, a, a Pablo Sandoval, right, who's got like a lot of extra weight on him. Super athletic, though. Yeah, right. And then yeah, you, you can't and, deny it. And then you have to ask someone like that the way he the way he crushes a baseball, if some of that extra weight is used is in, to his benefit for momentum. Mm -hmm. Now, would he be a little bit more agile at third base that if he was twenty or thirty pounds lighter? Sure, you can't help but think, yeah, you're right. Sure, yeah. I, I could see that, but then he also might not hit the ball as far if. Uh, he was smaller. So there's, I think there's yeah. places, and then same thing with like linemen, right? If you had a lineman who weighs 300 and something pounds, but you made him lose 50 to 60 pounds, he would be much more agile. He'll be faster, right? But then would he be less of a movable force and would he be as de as dominant as a lineman? So yeah, it's an interesting idea because I've seen, uh, I've seen like both kind of perspectives. Like, so um, I've seen linemen that actually like you think they have to just be big. They just have to be massive and, you know, immovable uh, where I've seen some linemen that uh, might have like smaller stature and, you know, a smaller body, but they're very uh, powerful. And, and the way that they can snap and move and the athleticism has knocked uh, these big ogres on their back. And it, it just it depends on like how you are grounded and how how much snap that you have. And, and so for me, it's like, it's all based on power uh, output. Doug, will you pull up a picture of uh, Aaron Donald? I want to see what he, his, his physique looks like. So I, I think there's a, um, I think you're right. I think there, I think there's a, a point, right? So I think there's a point where it's too much. How do we judge that as viewers? That's what's really tough. Yeah. I'm pulling up like arguably one of the best right now, right? Like, yeah, so look at that. Because if you change too, if you change their their body weight in their, it's going to change their mechanics. It's all going to get effective. So they're going to have to relearn a lot of these skills, uh, you know, in their 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 smaller uh, frame. And so that's that's something too to consider. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody like a Pablo, uh, you know, is, is going back and, and now is is going through swinging and the mechanics of it. You know, that whole weight distribution is going to change. So there's there's the best lineman in the game right there. Yeah. So he don't look he don't, he definitely don't look fat. No, no, no he looks he like looks a powerful as hell though. You yeah. know, you know what? It's way more complex than the black and white. This person's lean, this person's fat, therefore it's way more complex than that. Like yeah. for example, when you look at like weight class uh based sports like wrestling or mixed martial arts for example, you may see a heavyweight, you may see two heavyweights. One of them kind of looks a little soft, big guy, right? The other one is shredded and muscular. And you might think to yourself like, oh, the shredded muscular guy has the advantage. Okay, now let's pretend that they have equal skills. Like the skills are identical. Not necessarily. Maybe the really buffed lean guy had to like force and build his body to be a heavyweight. And the other guy that's kind of soft, he lives at that body weight. He's super comfortable with it. Right. He's not stressing and pushing his body to be that heavy. He's just a naturally big dude, in which case he's got the advantage. He's totally got the, you know, Fedor Emelianenko was like that. He yeah. was kind of doughy, and he would just. He didn't think he'd have the gas tank he did, but he could go forever. No, so it's way well, more complex at, uh, than what's, that. What's his face? That's local. That's uh, Cain Velasquez. No, 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 no. Uh, well, but, him too. But, yeah, him yeah. too. But I'm thinking of uh, why can't I think of his name? AKA guy right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just did his last fight. I mean, he's he has one of the best gas tanks in the game. Heavyweight, both light. Mark heavyweight. Hunt. No, uh, come on, bro. I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> uh, starts with a C. Why can I not think of his his name right now? I can't believe I'm and drawing. When you have a brain fart. It's contagious. I see yeah. that, dude. <laughs> Those are terrible. Oh. Right now. Doug, oh. please. Oh my god. Yeah. Light heavyweight and heavyweight UFC champion. Fucking straight out of San Jose. Yeah. And neither. Oh, that's so terrible. It's yeah. Like well, Olympic Olympic Cormier. Gold. Thank yeah, you, Cormier. Daniel oh. Cormier. Oh. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh Jesus, God, a, that's a perfect example, though. French I mean, names are hard. To look remember. at the <laughs> look, look at look at what he looks like, dude. He does not look like he. Well, it, I'm saying it's no, way more complex than that. And then Justin made an excellent point that you, you, if you're good in your body, and you think like if you're a chubby guy or girl and you're crushing at your sport, don't think if you just get lean you're going to be better automatically because you're good in your body. 
You lose weight and change the shape of your body. Yeah. You've changed the body. Now you're not as good at moving and using that body well, I, yeah. like you were with the other one. I went through a period of this where I felt like I had to get bigger just because my coaches were telling me for the inside position, you're going to face guys that are 350, 400 pounds like coming off the block. And, you know, they're going to smash you. And so you have to get bigger in order to be able to stand your ground at this point. Yeah. And I believed them. And I thought that I had to gain at least like 30, 40 pounds or I'm, I was going to get messed up. And I did. And I did not play anywhere near as good as I did uh, 30 pounds lighter than that. Yeah. And I should have just listened to myself because really it was about getting stronger. It was about getting more powerful, having more snap, being there first, like predicting uh, the outcome before they even could see. It. So that to me is way more advantageous. And you know, I think intuitively, you know what body weight you're, uh, you know, most efficient at. And yes. I think a lot of people kind of find that themselves. Yes. And, you know, we tend to confuse extreme aesthetics with right. health and performance. There's a wide range of body fat percentage that is healthy, right? So for a guy, could be. 8%, you could be as lean as 8% or as high as 18%. Uh, by the way, if you saw a picture of a guy at 8 and 18%, totally different, right? One, he looks dad bodish, uh, maybe even a little heavier than that. The other one, he looks, you got a six pack, and you could say, well, the 8% guy is healthier uh, version. Not necessarily, that range right there doesn't make that big of a difference. Um, there's a lot of other factors that determine health. And within that range right there, you could be very healthy or unhealthy, um, go outside of that, and then you start to run into some problems. Same thing with athletic performance. You can't necessarily look at a guy or girl um, and say that they're going to be really good or bad. I mean, you can in extreme cases. Like I can look at someone and be like, they're probably not going to run very fast. You know, they're, <laughs> they're you, know, you know, four foot seven or whatever. But you could, but outside of that, um, it's hard to tell. Now, there's certain things that I might look for because I'm a trainer. I might look at like someone's, hip development, upper back development. That usually means that they have some good power. Is it a guarantee? No. I've seen uh, far too many times somebody who looked like they should not be powerful and fast and completely it's, it's like the steroid right. talk. Yes. You know, it's yeah. like the steroid talk. Like there's you know, there's I've been wrong on both sides. So it's like it's too hard for an outsider to speculate, oh, he's twenty pounds or thirty pounds overweight. Now that being said, I think there's also there's extremes versions of this. Of there's course. definitely there's definitely athletes that come in, they sign a big contract, yeah, and they're locked they in. Get lazy. Yeah, and they get lazy and they come in the next season 15, yeah. 20 Start pounds. Playing first base. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> so they come in. So they're so it's not saying that that you know everybody the size that they're all coming in at professional sports is probably the best size for them. That's not true either. There's definitely people that you know, like I said, sign contracts. They know they got a deal for the next five to ten years, and they get lazy. They get lazy on their training and their diet, and they probably put on a few extra pounds. And had they not put on a few extra pounds, they'd be a better athlete. Right. So there are examples of both sides. Yeah.